Gretchen Purcell Jackson. I'm a pediatric surgeon at the Vanderbilt Children's Hospital, and I do research in the field of biomedical informatics. I'd like to tell you a little bit about an innovative technology-based engagement consultation service that we have developed for the Children's Hospital. This idea was initially conceived by Kevin Johnson, who's the chair of the Department of Biomedical Informatics. And he thought, wouldn't it be great if we could prescribe apps for the patients that we see in the hospital? And in fact, if they could perhaps go to an app store where they could fill a prescription for apps or technologies that could support them in taking care of their health, just like you go to a pharmacy for drug prescriptions or to a safety store for a car seat. We thought about how to implement this concept, and we came up with the idea of offering a medical student elective clerkship where students could come and function as a consultant to evaluate families, look at their health prob problems, recommend technologies to support those families, and actually help them implement those technologies in caring for those children. We began offering this consultation clerkship at the Vanderbilt Children's Hospital in 2014. It's staffed by myself and several other informatics faculty, such as Shiloh Anders, who's a human factors engineer, Robert Cronin, who's an internist, and Kevin Johnson, who's the department chair in biomedical informatics. As we've conducted these consultations, the focus has evolved from looking specifically at technologies to understanding the process of engagement and supporting people in that process. So patient engagement is thought to be a developmental process that proceeds in stages. The first stage is believing that the role of the patient or the caregiver is important in maintaining or promoting health. The second stage is having the knowledge and the confidence to take action on behalf of one's health. The third stage is actually taking action to maintain or improve one's health. And the fourth stage is continuing those actions under stresses. There have been tools to develop uh, to evaluate someone's activation levels, such as the patient activation measure, or PAM, or the parent version of that PPAM, which I'll refer to in this talk. The consultation process is an iterative process. So when students are available on the clerkship, we receive consults from any team in the pediatric hospital, usually from the hospitalist or the complex care teams, or sometimes from the intensive care units who have patients that are going to be in the hospital for a long time. But they're usually families who are confronted with a new diagnosis or are taking care of a child with a chronic illness. In conducting the consult, the student assesses the medical problems of the patients, the characteristics of the family, such as their health literacy, their numeracy skills, their socio-demographics. We look at the health-related needs of the family, their level of activation, and what technologies they use in their daily life, as well as what technologies they're willing to use to take care of their health. Then we get together as a team and we make recommendations for this family that are driven by the level of activation. So for a family that doesn't quite understand that their role is important in care, throwing a bunch of apps at them is probably not going to be a useful thing to do. As families proceed in the developmental process, then recommending specific technologies is more helpful. What's exciting for the students is they actually get to go work with the families to deliver those recommendations while the patients are admitted to the hospital. So let me tell you about a few of the consultations we've done. The first is a four-year-old boy who came into the hospital with vague abdominal symptoms and was diagnosed with a stage three Wilms tumor. That's a kidney tumor. That tumor was resected and this consult here came from the surgery team. It was deemed to be a stage three tumor so the patient would require chemotherapy and radiation. We assess the level of activation of the family to be approximately stage two. They had some knowledge and confidence, but they were a little overwhelmed to take action. This was a very technologically savvy family. They had a home computer that they used a couple times a week and a smartphone that they used daily. And they expressed to us that they wanted written materials in the hospital, but preferred online materials when they went home. When we assessed their needs, they had multiple questions related to the new cancer diagnosis and what would happen during treatment, as well as how they were going to manage this active four-year-old toddler who only had one kidney. And they had the need to communicate with multiple providers. So when they came to the hospital, they only had a pediatrician, but they were going home with a new surgeon, oncologist, radiation oncologist, and a nephrologist who would care for their child. The recommendations we made for this patient, we found a a website from the American Cancer Society, which specifically addressed questions about Wilms tumor. 
and we hooked the mother up with an online community from the Association of Cancer Online Resources, which would allow her to interact with others to get her questions answered as she proceeded through treatment with her child. The NIDDK offers a great website which describes the considerations for someone with one kidney. And to help the family communicate with their providers, we got the mother registered for My Health at Vanderbilt and gave her access to her child's records. And we gave her practice with using those messaging and appointment um, functions within My Health at Vanderbilt. And we also encouraged all of her new providers to send her a message so that she could easily respond to that if she had a question from a specific provider. The second example is also a patient with a new cancer diagnosis. So this was a seven month old who had had months of constipation and had been admitted several times with urinary retention and eventually on admission to our institution was diagnosed with a presacral tumor which turned out to be a stage three unresectable neuroblastoma. So this patient underwent a biopsy and portacath placement for chemotherapy. Now the situation was complicated by the fact that this child was cared for by a single mother who had limited income and she'd recently moved to the Nashville area and didn't have much support. We assessed her health literacy, which was relatively high with the Realm instrument and she scored a 64 out of 66. And we also assessed her numeracy skills, which were relatively low, scoring uh, one out of six on what is a very difficult math test. We also assessed her level of activation to be at a stage two. She was also very technologically savvy and engaged in her child's care, but she was overwhelmed by this new diagnosis and her child actually became very sick during hospitalization. This mother used a home computer, smartphone, iPad, social media, and a variety of web resources to care for her child. In fact, she looked on Google and WebMD and Wikipedia for months trying to figure out what was going on with her child before a diagnosis was made. Her needs were interesting. She was mostly overwhelmed by confusion about who was who and how things operated in an academic medical center. She had been seen in community hospitals before and she was now being seen by a number of specialists and she didn't know who to ask what questions to. And she didn't understand the roles of residents, medical students and attendings in an academic medical center. She also had a lot of concerns about the portacath that had been placed in her child, as well as the Foley catheter that he would likely be going home with. And being a single mother in a new town, she had a strong need for emotional support. In addition, she had some simple needs, like she couldn't remember questions to ask during morning rounds. And she also had a lot of concerns about the nutrition and growth of her child, whose growth had not been appropriate for his age, given an undiagnosed cancer. We made several recommendations for this mother that made a big difference. The student who was on the service spent a lot of time with this mother providing an explanation of the roles of the different specialists, the oncologists, the surgeons, the pediatric intensive care unit providers, and they drew a diagram of the medical hierarchy explaining the roles of medical students, interns, residents, and the attending physicians. We gave her paper versions of information sheets about Foley catheters and about the portacath that would give her information to refer to when she took her child home with those devices. And we gave her a large packet from the Family Resource Center, which provided information on a variety of in-person as well as online support communities to help the mother. And she actually did start interacting with some of those. Now, this is someone who's very technologically savvy and she used her smartphone. In fact, she was using it most of the time we walked in the room, but she didn't think about using it for things like writing down her questions. So we pointed out a notepad app on both her iPad and her phone that she could use to keep track of questions. And we also showed her a free iPad app that could help her record the growth curve and got her signed up for My Health at Vanderbilt so that she could monitor her child's growth measurements online. Now we've learned quite a bit from this two year experience with the consultation service. First and foremost, the families love this service. They, we identify a lot of needs through the consultation service and we're able to meet many of them by simply giving them education, educational resources, or health information technology interventions. One of the things we found is that sometimes addressing those simple needs that markedly increase a family's engagement. In the last example, the mother was really overwhelmed by the academic setting and she didn't know who was who or understand the roles of different people. And once we explained those things to her, she became much more involved in her son's care 
during rounds in the hospital. And we hoped that would make her much more likely to be involved in his care when she went home. The students loved this rotation because they got to directly deliver care. They made recommendations for the families and they got to implement them with the families while they were in the hospital. And they also learned about things that they didn't learn anywhere else in medical school. For example, barriers to optimal care, both in the hospital and at home, that are specific to the family. Finally, the students got to really contribute to the child's care. I would say as someone who participated in all of these consultations, I learned something from every single student. The students brought forth innovative technologies and resources, many that I hadn't even heard of, and they identified barriers to optimal care that sometimes the primary care team hadn't thought about. And as a team, we were able to all learn and grow and provide better care for the families. I have several ongoing research projects, as well as a bunch of ideas about where to take this consultation service. I'm currently conducting a retrospective review of the 22 consultations that we have done for families at the Children's Hospital by the eight students who have participated in these consultations during either the clerkship rotation or research immersion rotations. I'm also conducting a prospective trial, which looks at the effects of these consultation services. We're measuring the effects of the consultation on the patient or parent activation, as well as on how well the needs that we identify are met at discharge from the hospital and at 30 days after discharge. This is a research protocol that was actually written by a medical student, Ebony Ingram. She was the first person to rotate on this consultation service, and she was so excited about it, she spent her research rotation developing this research protocol. And another student, Mary Masterman, actually enrolled the first um, participants in this prospective trial. I'm writing several grant proposals and developing a protocol to do a randomized trial to evaluate the effects of these consultations versus usual care in our healthcare setting. And I'm very interested in understanding the education, the educational impact of these consultations, not only on the student, but on the team as a whole, as we learn from one another in the process of delivering care. It's probably not surprising that a lot of people at Vanderbilt are very excited about seeing this consultation service be offered full time, not only at the Children's Hospital, but also in the adult hospital. So I'm working with administrators to develop a business model to make this happen.